Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Mr. Pronounce Adventures in my Ford Transit camper van build. And this video is going to be about solar dump loads. I talked about a solar dump load in a, in a video a, while, a long time ago, and now I've finally had it rigged up for a couple months. And I'm going to show you how it's been getting on with it. So, what is a solar dump load? Um, in this case, it's be getting free hot water. Uh, and what it is, is sort of, as the name sounds, after the solar has finished charging the batteries, um, there's nowhere for it to go. So in, in my van I've noticed generally sort of like towards the end of late spring the batteries were being full by about 11 o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock, which means I was missing six, seven hours worth of sunlight and free energy every day because the charger, solar charger was going into float mode and stopping any more power coming in because the batteries were full, there's nowhere to put that, that energy. So I put a 300 watt electric element in my uh, hot water tank when I originally put the hot water tank in. 300 watt electric watt, um, electric heat element is going to take about 25 amps at 12 volt. But I've got 500 watts of solar on the roof, and it, on a bright day, I'm, I'm easily way above um, 350 to 400. And usually nowadays, on like full sunshine, I can hit about 500 and 590 is the highest I've seen, which is great considering I've only got 500 watts of panels. It's not a particularly new idea. I think it's done a lot more in sort of off-grid domestic setups but I haven't seen it done that many times or mentioned done that many times in vans so I've installed it and the first sort of few months I've had it in it's been absolutely brilliant so everything is installed in this video there's not going to be any time lapses of it being installed there wasn't really too much to install it was the setup but I'll sort of talk you through all the setup so this is my Vitron app and this is kind of a good example of sort of the lost energy um, when I've not had the dump load on. So here you can see with when the dump load wasn't on, it showed that the battery was in, um, the charger was in bulk mode for eight and a half hours, then a bit of absorption and then spent seven hours in float mode. I mean, seven hours, I missed out on potential energy I could have put into anywhere else because the batteries are full. So when I had the dump load running, I, was, I, did, I never allowed it to reach float mode. It would always turn on and I would get the maximum amount of usable energy that day going into the batteries or and after, after the batteries into the hot water. So the way I've done that is I've prevented the charger from reaching its bulk voltage or to reaching the voltage it would then change into the absorption mode and then into float uh, by setting the element to turn on at a voltage a little bit below it. So I've triggered the dump load by using the uh, load output on the Victron charger. You could use an external um, dump load relay as well, it's a similar effect. Um, so I've got sort of two triggers, I've got the high voltage trigger and the low voltage trigger. The high voltage is when the system voltage reaches, in this case 13.35, um, the hot water element turns on, and because that, that's turned on, that means the energy now goes into there and is gonna stop the charger from reaching uh, the top end of its bulk and going into the absorption and float phase. 13.35 um, is sort of taking into account I'm using lithium batteries and, and they're going to have an increased voltage because it's charging. Same for the low voltage. The low voltage is set for 13.15. Uh, and using lithium batteries, some people might think that's actually quite a, going to be quite a low state of charge. In this case, it's taking into account there is going to be a voltage drop because I'm running a 25 um, amp element. Uh, so in reality, the high voltage ends up turning on around 90%, give or take a few percentages, and the low voltage turns off around 75%. Um, so I'm really, so the hot water element is only sort of on between the top ends of, my, of the charge cycle, uh, sorry, the top end of the state of charge, just so it's really only using additional energy and not sort of going into the power I've currently got and using energy just to heat water with electric. Um, and this is sort of going to be for most people. It needs to be. It's going to be, need to be tweaked. Um, these voltages to sort of make sure it works for you and sort of your batteries and your solar setup. Right. I'm going to show you the actual physical aspect of how the whole system's uh, wired up, including how it regulates the temperature of the tank so it doesn't get too hot. So in the electrical cupboard, this is my Victor MPPT. I've got a 150 volt bottle, so that means it's got a physical. Where is it? Physical relay output at the bottom. Um, the smaller 100 volt ones, the Victron Direct pins can be reused as a relay. 
and the smaller 75 volt one has a load output terminal. So I'm not actually using the relay itself to trigger um, the heating element directly because the heating element is far more powerful than the relay can uh, handle. I'm actually just using it as a signal. So I've got 12 volt going in and then when the relay is triggered that 12 volt signal comes out. That 12 volt signal comes all the way over to my water cabinet here and that goes into this um, temperature controlled relay and that powers the unit on that then checks what the temp temperature of the tank is and in my case if the tank is below 60 degrees then the hot element turns on if, when, when it once it reaches 60 degrees it turns off again it also has a high stasis set for um, half a degree so after it's up to 60 degrees it turns off when it drops back down to 59.5 uh, it will turn back on again and heat it up and that just keeps the, the hot water nice and topped up, especially after it's finished heating the tank, it can just turn on, you only need to turn on for a few minutes per hour just to maintain that 60 degrees with the tank being insulated. Slips behind here, this little area. And that means in the morning, I can still have hot water at 60 degrees with just the hot, ele hot water element ticking on occasionally during the night. These two other temperature relays are to do with the bubble vans hot water system. So after this relay triggers, that is going to that also isn't powerful enough to have the direct 25 amps of the hot water element going through it. So that relay output goes to here, which is a 200 amp relay, way overkill, but that's the only relay I actually had. Um, so that's what I use, and then it's fused as well, and then that goes directly into the hot water tank, which lives below here. Um, it's currently built in at the minute, so I can't access it fully, but I'll show you some footage of what that looks like in the tank. So this is sort of a, a alright visualisation for those who are interested on the sort of cutoff triggers um, to start it and to, to stop it. So this is uh, the morning of a day, this is going to be midnight over here and then this is the following day. Uh, this is the state of charge and this is the, the voltage in the system and the current amps and current going through it. So sort of in the morning, batteries are charging, batteries are charging, and then it reaches its peak here, which is about 94%, and that triggered the uh, hot water element to come on, so that came on, sort of a bit of a, a bit of a drop there, maybe there was a little bit of cloud coming over, and then it, main, and then it heated up the water as it sort of maintained the same um, state of charge, so enough solar was coming in to counteract the amount of energy being used to heat the element. Then after about two hours, at this point, it finished heating the water. So then the rest of the energy was just going back into the batteries to sort of top up to 100%. Reach 100% and then turn the float mode. Getting, getting towards the evening anyway. And then throughout the evening, you can see every sort of hour and a bit, the hot water tank just clicked on for probably three or four minutes just to maintain 60 degrees. And then when it got to about five o'clock in the morning, it hit the, the low voltage cutoff, which was about about 80%, maybe about 75% here. And then the next day would start and the same thing would happen again. Some would come up and if it was the batteries got themselves fully charged enough, then the hot water comes on and it would just top up the tank. The following day, it would take a lot less because the hot water tank would probably still be about 50 degrees if it had turned off at about five in the morning. I do realize in some ways I'm effectively just using this as a analog version of logic as I've basically got, is it between the, the battery voltages to turn on? Uh, and then down there, is it between the water um, temperatures to turn on? And then if both of those end up being yes, it turns it on. Someone convenient with an Arduino or microcontrollers could probably actually make this system a lot less simplified or do it digitally opposed to me doing it effectively analog in a mechanical way. Um, but all those components were cheap. Even if you don't have a Victron style MPPT, you could also get dump relays which are pretty much pretty similar to the temperature relays only they check the system voltage opposed to the uh, opposed to that checking it so you can just add that in your system in line anyway. So quite a few people will be interested on actually how efficient is using a 300 watt element to heat water. Um, so I have about a 15 to 18 litre hot water tank which is my main shower tank and that's what I use for my recirculating shower. Uh, so anywhere between 15 and 18 litres depending how much I've waters in it or how much I've topped up and generally it takes around just over two and a half hours to heat it from um, two about 25 
degrees all the way up to the 60 degrees and then we'll happily just maintain it throughout the day uh, and for me that's absolutely fine my batteries are fully charged by 11 o'clock midday one o'clock and then the element turns on it might be on for another two hours usually the hot water is done by three o'clock four o'clock if I had a shower in the evening that's, that's, that's perfect so another byproduct pro so another byproduct of the dump load which wasn't originally in, um, planned for but actually worked out quite well is because the the dump load trigger is based off system voltage it's not based off what the um, the solar MPPT is doing particularly it's based off what the overall voltage of the system is which means since I have a 30 amp battery battery charger the same effect happens whilst I'm driving so if I'm driving a particular long day to make the most of it uh, after the the batteries are finished charging or combined charging with the solar as well uh, reaches almost full and it hits that voltage trigger and then the hot water dump load turns on as well so it's um, it's not a perfect system there's a few there's a few tweaks but I think rudimentarily it works pretty well for what I want um, it'd be far better if I could base the relay off a state of charge trigger from the Victron equipment opposed to off a voltages because the voltages as I mentioned earlier are affected by the um, by voltage drop or the opposite one of the other things is it, it doesn't work with PWM it's powered effectively so whilst editing I figured out I've actually explained this kind of terribly what I was trying to get across was that the element is, three, is a 300 watt element, it's always going to be pulling 300 watts. Um, which is fine, so when I've got 400 watts of energy coming in from the solar, 300 of that is going to be going to the heat element, and that remaining 100 watts is going towards the batteries. Um, but let's say a cloud comes over and drops my solar down to 50 watts coming in, um, that heat element is still pulling uh, the 300 watts, so that means 50 of the watts is now coming from solar, and then the battery is going to pick up the other 250. Um, what would be sort of ideal would be uh, what I'm trying to get across is that this doesn't work that it just puts excess solar into if there's a cloud over it's producing less it puts less into the, the element it's not the case it's always pulling the same amount but that's the reason I've put the low voltage um, cut off at about 80% overall charge is in the event of that a really bright morning and, that, and then, then suddenly they're putting lots of energy and I get the battery sort of mostly charged activates the heater and then it's cloudy for the rest of the day uh, after it's been turned on the water would still finish heating but it would sort of heat end up heating mostly from the battery uh, and that's why that trigger is set really high at 80 percent so if that does happen I don't sort of really drain my batteries um, right back to the rest of the video I think the system would work on far smaller vans as well so people have only got maybe 200 250 watt 300 watt panel on the roof that opposed to a 300 watt element go for a smaller element such as like the 150 watt elements I think that would be the same principle it'll just take a little bit longer but mine takes two hours to heat my hot water tank to 60 degrees if you had 150 um, the watt one it just might take four hours but still if it's hot by five o'clock of the day you know you still got hot water at the end of the day for having a shower or washing up or whatever you want um, and also it's probably a good option for anyone who has like a this a hot water tank is it means you can bring your tank up to 60 degrees quite often stops anything nasty potentially growing in it one of the byproducts I've also found having the um, electric heating element in the hot water and the tank generally being kept at 60 degrees most of the time is I can have a fully electric shower so because I've got the recirculating system and it's the same 14 15 18 liters of water going round and round getting filtered every time the actual thermal drop on every sort of loop round is pretty minimal and the 300 watt element actually almost keeps um, keeps up with it so I could have like a 10 minute shower where the shower is still a lovely hot 40 degrees shower temperature for sort of 10 minutes before it starts to dip down into sort of lukewarm maybe I'll play around in the future putting a 600 watt element in uh, and then you can actually split those elements into th two 300 watts so I could have a fully electric shower um, if I wanted um, but yeah I think generally that's going to be it for this video not actually showed much to do but it's a very simple actual integration of the system into it it's just the actual setting up and the fine tuning is a bit which takes a while but I haven't had to have the diesel heater on during the summer for for about four or five weeks now to heat water and I've had showers most days because it's just the solar dump load does it 
Uh, obviously in the winter it's not really going to be a usable system because there's a lot less um, energy so you're not really going to use the dump load in the in the winter but the whole point of the system is so that it just automatically turns on and off you don't really have to think about it so during the sunnier months of the year it's just no problem it just happens in the background and you've got hot water nothing to think about um, so yeah hopefully you found the video useful um, please leave a comment subscribe if not if you had any particular questions about it or i think i've missed anything um either leave them below or message me on my instagram uh you can have a sort of chats on there it's a little bit easier uh, but yeah thank you and i'll see you next time cheers bye